everyone and welcome to the intro to C++ in the Unreal Engine and in this video we'll be taking a look at the very basics and they are the header and the code files that are generated whenever you create a new C++ class. For this example I'm just going to create a basic pawn class so that we can explore what's included by default and how we can use this in the different files. And the videos in this playlist are going to be created in a way that you don't technically need to follow along with the videos, they're just going to be very short contained topics, kind of intended to work as documentation. But with that said, obviously, if you wanted to follow along, that can help get a little bit more of an understanding of what's happening. So I've just created our pawn class. And when this has finished generating and compiling the class, you should automatically be taken to your IDE of choice. Here I'm using the Visual Studio 2019 with the ReSharper plugin enabled. That's not really important, but that's just so that you know why my setup may look a little bit different to what you're using. Now, by default, the header and the code files should be displayed in the top toolbar. If this is different or isn't the case for you, then you can navigate over to your Solution Explorer and just open them manually. To begin here, we're in the header file, and you can kind of think of this as the place to store your variables that you'll be using in multiple places in the class or that you want exposed in Blueprints later. You'll also be defining your components and your functions in here as well. And at the top of the header file, we have the default includes, which basically just generate the information from other classes that this class will need to reference later on. Just below this, we have some information about the class that we're in. Here we can see that we are in a pawn base, which is the name of the class that I've created. And the prefixed a basically indicates that we're in a subclass of an actor. Next to that, we can see the a pawn, which tells us that it's the direct parent class, which is the default pawn class. We can see a little bit more about this by going into the pawn class, which we can then also see just here is a child of the actor class, as I mentioned just a moment ago. So that's kind of how the parent-child hierarchy relationship works. But we want to focus just on the header and code file of this class to begin with. So back in the header file, we have our body of code just here. And this includes a constructor for the class, which is basically where everything will be initialized and set up in the code file that we'll move over to in just a second. We also have an override function for the parents begin play, event tick, and setup player input functions. So if we move on over to the code file, this is where the variables and the functions that we define in the header file are implemented. The functions we have here are overrides, which we need to define that way as they're already implemented in the parent classes. So what we're doing is we're overriding their basic functionality with our own just here. And we're also including their implementation by the use of the super calls in each of the functions. Now that basically means that when we run this using the begin play as an example, we'll first execute anything implemented in the parent pawn begin play, and then it will run any logic that we place in the overridden begin play here just below that code. So let's take a quick look at adding some of our own code. Back in the header file, we'll create a few private variables, an integer, a float, and a boolean. With these defined in the header file, we can now access them in the code file. And this is just an example of how we can use some basic if checks on the variable types that we created a moment ago. So back in the header file, we can also do something very similar for functions. And I've created here a basic private void function named demo function. We then need to implement this into the code file. And this is done by defining the same function type as the header, which in this case is a void just meaning that it doesn't return any specific value or variable type. Then we specify the owning class, which in this case is the a pawn base. And the double colons after this are an accessor to the function that you wish to implement. So that will be our demo function, followed by the open closed parentheses and then the open closed curly brackets. And that's really all you need to do to implement a function in the code file. And we can then use this like any other function by simply calling it in something like the begin play function. So they're the main things that you need to understand to get started with your C++ classes. A lot of things have been skimmed over here, but I will be covering things like the private protected and public specifiers in their own specific topic videos. The final thing I wanted to demonstrate is how this relates to a blueprint class. So this might help make sense of things for people familiar with uh, blueprint coding. So what I've done is just created a blueprint class based on the C++ class 
that we created just a moment ago. And just to mention that these things are not technically an exact like for like, but for the purpose of explanation, just bear with me as these are kind of as close as we can get at making a link to the two. So inside of a standard Blueprint class, we can consider all of the details in the left-hand panel here as our header file, because this is where we define the variables, the functions, and the components. Next, we have all of our graphs, such as the construction script, the event graph, and these are the code files, essentially. This is where the functions and variables are implemented, and of course, where everything is processed at runtime. So they're the basics of creating a new class and what you can expect to find in the class, as well as some of the basic terminologies that we'll be using throughout this playlist. This is a little bit of a test, so do let me know what you think of the new format. My intention is to create a fairly large playlist of C++ focus snippets to act almost as a type of documentation. So you can just jump in to one topic you're looking for specifically, and I'll be covering things from new properties and new functions, line tracing, input, uh, everything in their own small condensed topic. As always, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon. Your support helps allow me to continue creating these videos and is always greatly appreciated. Of course, if you'd like to show your support for the channel and grab some rewards, including access to the Discord community from as little as $1 per month, then do check out the link in the description below, or just consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel if you've enjoyed the video or find anything useful. As ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.